Boy, what a day. We knew something was going to happen today. We knew with the six ranked matchups, top 25 matchups, that is, we knew things were going to change. And, you know, yeah, you know, Colorado finally got their first win. Yeah, going down to the FCS real quick, you know, like Montana lost to Idaho. North Dakota State lost to South Dakota State, and then you got, you know, things like D2, like Ferris State, uh, they lost, you know, I mean, it's just crazy, crazy stuff all over. But in the FBS, where all, pretty much all our problems are right now, things today were insane. You know, Auburn Ole Miss to start us off. I mean, my goodness, man, there was a lightning delay. We had to do get you know, uh, basically body slammed it. I mean, the camera angles were messed up for like the five minutes I was watching this game. And of course, you know, Auburn put up a fight. They put up 34 points on Ole Miss, but unfortunately, Auburn had three turnovers and they couldn't stop the run game. Zach Evans, Jackson Dart, Quinshawn Judkins, and, you know, Dart threw three touchdowns, by the way. It, it was not all the running game. But, I mean, those three guys combined, you know, to help Ole Miss put up 400 rushing yards on Auburn. That's pretty ridiculous. Pretty ridiculous, I'll tell you that much. And then Kansas, Oklahoma had no defense. We're talking Dylan Gabriel and Jason Bean decided to have a little party out on the field at Oklahoma's homecoming. I mean, Bean was, you know, handing the ball off and passing to Devin Neal, Mason Fairchild, you know, Lawrence Arnold. I mean, you know, Dylan Gabriel on the other hand, he was having to, you know, hand the ball off and throw the ball to Martin Mims, Eric Ray, Brayton Willis. And I mean, at the, in the end, Kansas loses their second consecutive game. And will likely drop out the top 25 as Oklahoma finally gets a Big 12 win. Will that help them in the future, you know, in the in the Big 12 race? Probably not, based on the way the Big 12 is going. But Oklahoma finally has a win. Kansas is still in the race, but can't afford another loss. Speaking of, you know, some other teams in the Big 12 race, Iowa State, Texas is, I mean, my goodness, this game here. You know, as a Longhorns fan, this was stressful. Iowa State played tough again. I said in my preview, hey, the Cyclones have to find their offense, and that's what Deckers did. He was throwing it to Jalen Noel and Xavier Hutchinson throughout the entire day. But, 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 but. Yeah, there was the whole, oh, is that or is that not a targeting? That did not look like targeting to me. That looked like a shoulder hit, helmet to shoulder, you know, on one angle. At least the best angle it was. But, you know, for Iowa State, unfortunately, when you can't stop the Horns running backs, when you can't stop Quinn Ewers when he's not throwing bad passes because he threw some bad ones, yeah, he was like 17 to 26 on the day, but there were the, like some of those throws by Ewers were pretty, pretty bad. And some of these should have been touchdowns. He should have had way more touchdowns than he did. He had three of them today. The game winner to Xavier Worthy, of course, and then the defense for Texas making the plays needed. Again, the interception late in the end zone in the first quarter and the punt block. All of those things helped, and the punt block didn't even lead to anything because Texas missed a field goal. But in the end, Texas's defense was able to make more plays than Iowa State, and that, that's just the that's just the beauty of it all. Again, Iowa State gonna you know, lose another nail biter. 0 and 4 in Big 12 play now, right? Yeah, not gonna get any easier for the Cyclones as they keep on going. Texas next week. We'll be talking about them and their opponent, who we'll be talking about in a moment here. As we move on to Illinois, they Chase Brown, man, that man can go. He had, I mean, he had, uh, you know, like 180 yards rushing himself. That was, in fact, that was the same, I think that's the same amount of yards 
you know, Minnesota had the entire game because, I mean, they had only 180 yards total, 38 of them being passing yards. And, I mean, the Illini out here with this defense looking legit. Oh, my goodness, man. Brett Bielema? Hey, wait a minute. This team is bowl eligible. You know, this team knocked Tanner Morgan out the game. You know, Mo Ibrahim, yeah, he did, you know, some work, but that wasn't good enough. And, I mean, Illinois, based off of some things happening, they're going to be moving on up in these polls. They're going to be moving on up, and they are in the driver's seat in the Big Ten West now. They can breathe a little bit easier, but the Big Ten West does no favors because, again, it's still a dogfight right now. Yeah, you knocked off Minnesota, but you still got to get through the rest of the Big Ten West first. Again, yeah, the Big Ten West doesn't look very intimidating, but there's still time. There's still time for somebody else to try and usurp Illinois. But Illinois right now in the driver's seat and looking comfortable and ready to go to the Big Ten Championship if they can. The big game in that noon window was Penn State Michigan, the big noon game, and it disappointed. It disappointed in every single way. The Nittany Lions defense couldn't even stop the run at all. They got a pick six. They got a quick try from Sean Clifford that actually got them the lead. But, I mean, Penn State only had, like, nine plays for, like, most of the first half. Like, they were not on the field at all most of the first half. And even in the second half, it was just nothing they could do to stop Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards. Because they ran for four touchdowns, 300-plus yards. All of that was too easy for Michigan. They just steamrolled Penn State like it was nobody's business. And Penn State is going to drop out the top 10. They don't get a rest because Minnesota is going to be coming in angry for the whiteout next weekend. And I, I don't know how that's going to go because right after Minnesota is Ohio State for Penn State. Michigan, on the other hand, they, they still... I'm still, you know, not entirely convinced, but... They, they definitely proved themselves today. And that, that that's just how the cookie crumbles, you know? So, Michigan, huge win. Penn State, disappointment once again because they did not show up at all. In the afternoon, my goodness, we had a trio of games that were between top 25 teams. But honestly... At the end of the day, you should have just watched two of them. Um, Oklahoma State TCU first, my game of the week. And what a ward was out in Fort Worth. Kendra Miller, Quentin Johnston, and Max Duggan, who was a hero in this game. I mean, this game went to two overtimes. Spencer Sanders of the Oaks had the lead for most of it. And then Duggan was like, he hit the Dougie and helped the Horn Frogs get the biggest W they've had in quite some time and TCU is going to stay unbeaten and Oklahoma State will fall from the ranks of the undefeated and will fall at the top 10 tomorrow and I mean again Oklahoma State you know they had their moments of you know like they were going to completely take control of this game and they just could not do it like they kept settling for field goals and that allowed TCU to, you know, get back into it. And that was, you know, they kept stalling out drives as well. Like, the, it, it, it was just all sorts of things that helped TCU get back into it. So, it's unfortunate Oklahoma State's going to have to face Texas next week. Not going to be easy for either of these teams because it, it's going to be a dogfight, I think. We'll talk about that game next week. NC State Syracuse, on the other hand, unfortunately, Devin Leary... He's done for the year. Um, he'll have to have surgery on, like, I think it's like his pectorals or something like that. I believe it's his shoulder or his pecs. One of, one of those, I forgot what the injury actually was, but Jack Chambers didn't even do anything. I mean, NC State had a drive that was like 18 plays, 9 minutes, 
barely got any yards, and I mean, NC State, all they did was kick three field goals in this game, and that Syracuse defense was legit, as I said. Sean Tucker had over 100 yards from scrimmage. Garrett Schrader had, you know, two touchdown passes, both of those going to Oronde Gadsden, the, uh, I believe it's Gadsden Jr., Gadsden the second, I, I forgot, but Oronde Gadsden got those two touchdowns from him at Syracuse. That defense, real. That offense, yeah, there's yeah, there were two picks by Schrader again, but they're real. And Syracuse has a big time test coming up against Clemson next Saturday, and we'll talk about Clemson in a moment here. But um, man, did you expect Syracuse to be six and zero right now? I certainly didn't. I expected Bayer to be able to put up more of a fight against Georgia. I didn't expect them to sh get shut out, though. I mean, my goodness, Georgia's trying to act like, you know, the team that they were at the beginning of the season again. It's Stetson Bennett and that dog's crew put up 579 yards of offense on them. Like, my goodness, man. At least, at least try, Vanderbilt. At least try to score some points. You know, you did it against Ole Miss. Why didn't you do it against Georgia? Come on. And then the big one. Number three versus number six. Oh, my goodness. A, a, a war in Knoxville. We're talking, this game was bonkers. It came down to the very, very end. We're talking Hendon Hooker had a fantastic performance. Yeah, he threw his first pick of the season. Yeah, the Vols, you know, had multiple, multiple errors in this game. Like, we're talking, why, why would you go for it? On fourth down, on multiple occasions, when you're up by multiple scores, multiple times, doesn't make any sense. Whatever, it ended up, you know, it, it ended up, you know, making things a lot more interesting. You know, a fumble. You know, Hooker tried to hand it off to uh, Hyatt. No, it was, it was somebody else. Uh, Hooker tried to hand it off, and unfortunately, that exchange didn't go too well. Bamba picked it up for a touchdown. I mean, it, it, it just, and that defense, they can't stop anything. The Vols defense can't stop anything. Remember, this is the same Vols team that went to OT with Pitt. So they can't stop too much at all. You know, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And then Alabama, for Alabama, Bryce Young put up nearly, what, 455 on them? You know, Jameer Gibbs ran for three touchdowns. And I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah, that was all that. But the real start of the story here was Jalen Hyatt catching five touchdowns from Hendon Hooker, all five of them. Six catches, 207 yards. I mean, my goodness, man. What a game from him. But back to Bama. And it, this, this has been kind of building up since the Texas game, you know. And again, Texas probably should have beat Bama, but that O line, it's not good. They, Bryce Young kept getting it. Bryce Young kept getting smoked in the pocket at times. He was trying to run out the pocket on multiple occasions like a little mouse because the Vols had, you know, sent five, six guys, four sometimes four guys on pressure plays on multiple occasions. And I mean, Nick Saban was out here livid livid throughout this game because of all these penalties again you know Nayland Stadium you know man it was it was wild that that crowd knows how to show up to rock a top and I mean Bama's defense they can't stop it they can't stop anything at all like they kept getting burnt by Island you know and Brew McCoy on, on the one play you know that set the Vols up to win the game with the field goal as the Tide also missed the field goal again. You know, their kicker has not been very good at kicking the ball the past couple weeks at Texas A&M. Last week he missed field goals that were not very um, necessary to miss. And then he missed, you know, in this game. And I mean, the Vols... They took it over with 15 seconds left. Again, Brew McCoy with that catch. 
to essentially put Tennessee in range, and that was a wrap. Bama will lose to Tennessee, and they did. For the first time in over a decade, since 06, that Tennessee has beaten Alabama. Crazy stuff. Loved it. And then another upset alert that happened in the curse of ranked teams in the Sun Belt continues. James Madison, it is your turn. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you thought it, we all forgot about that. Yeah, um, we did not forget about that because, unfortunately, you know, I said, hey, Clay, it's Clay Helton and Georgia Sutton. They beat Nebraska, you know. There was there if something weird happened, it was going to be, you know, because of Georgia Southern in this game. And unfortunately for James Madison, yeah, their quarterback Todd Santeo, he had what four sixty eight passing through the air, but he threw three picks. And that's not a recipe for success as we all know. And Todd Van Trees, man. This man was lighting up the Dukes. Lighting them up. He had five touchdowns in this game. Just lit them up. Passing the ball all over the place. And I mean, James Madison couldn't stop a, a fly. You know, they, could, they definitely could stop the Eagles in this game. And James Madison's just going to fall right back out the top 25. Not and, and they're and they're, not, they're not going to a bowl game. Remember, they're not going to a bowl game. They can't go to the Sun Belt Championship. They can't go to you know. It, they can't do anything after their eleven games. They're done. And James Madison, along with Coastal Carolina, they're no longer undefeated either. Ah uh, well, so much for that undefeated matchup between them in late November, the last week of the season. Oh well, it is what it is. There's still time, though, for both of those teams to, you know, recover. But the Spun Belt continues to impress in the in the weirdest ways. Because, I mean, it's probably not going to be the top conference from the group of five this year. It will probably be a team from the American. We'll talk about those teams as they, you know, finally start to, you know, become relevant again. You know, like somebody start ranking some of these teams from the American, please. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about them in a moment. We'll talk about them. And then in the evening, we had a trio of games. Um, Mississippi State, Kentucky. I expected more points from this game, but Will Rogers and company decided, nah, we're not going to do anything on offense. We're only going to have, what, Rogers throw for like 203 yards, throw a pick, only a touchdown pass, a single touchdown pass. And, I mean, this team couldn't get anything going, you know, at all. The Bulldogs needed to, and they couldn't. Because, I mean, Will Levis, he, he was efficient. Yeah, he threw a pick six. That was just, uh, it, it was a pick six that was crazy. But, you know, the real star of the show was Chris Rodriguez. He ran for 197, two touchdowns, and just bulldozed the Bulldogs' defense all night long. And that's what you want if you're Kentucky. Kentucky bounced right back in the best possible way because they lost two straight and if they lost this game they were going to tumble out the top 25 altogether and you know Kentucky they needed this they're still in a you know in a in a position to where they can do something in the SEC East but they're going to have to have a lot of help now Mississippi State on the other hand I don't know I don't know I don't know what they can do. Maybe they can try to do better next week against uh, angry Alabama Crimson Tide, but we'll talk about that game next week. Okay? And then Clemson, Florida State as well. That, I thought that was going to start off, you know, look like Florida State was going to beat Clemson for all of the first quarter, you know, because Florida State, they started out tough. Jordan Travis was out here playing hard, and yet, and yet, that Clemson defense came in the clutch yet again. And I will continue to continue to doubt DJ Uilakalele 
but he just continue, he just continues to look efficient. He just continues to look efficient out there. Like he threw another three touchdowns. And I mean, Will Shipley, he was also beasting and feasting out there. He had, you know, what, nearly 200 um, all-purpose yards by himself. And I mean, the Knowles, they just kept making mistakes. There was a sequence in which they did a fake punt, and it didn't go too well. Just not the type of stuff you want to see if you're a Florida State fan. Just not the type of stuff you want to see. You know, if you're trying to knock off Clemson, like as soon as it was what 31 to 14, I was like, I'm done. I'm gonna go over to the Mississippi State Kentucky game. The last game that just finished up about I don't know, like 20 minutes ago, before I started recording, was USC Utah, and it turned into Pac-12 after dark as it got dark, and these refs they were on another level tonight. My goodness, like, especially towards the end of this game, all these flags. Oh, Lord, the ref ball moment of the week goes to this game because, oh, my goodness. These refs don't know what targeting is. These refs don't know what in the world's going on. They're clueless out here. They are clueless. But Cam Rising, five touchdowns, saved the day yet again. This USC Trojans defense was just not... They haven't been good all season long. And they finally get exposed as the team that just cannot hold up very well. Like, yeah, yeah, Caleb Williams can throw for five touchdowns. Yeah, Mario Williams and Jordan Addison can, you know, just streak up and down the field and catch whatever Caleb Williams throws at them. But when this defense for the Trojans, led by Lincoln Riley, by the way, Lincoln Riley can't coach defense very well. Like, this defense for USC is not very good. And I've been saying that all season long. And look at what happened. Look at what happened. USC finally takes an L. And they, will, they too will tumble out the top ten. As they should. So... In any case, I think I think next week is going to be real, real intriguing, you know? We got some goodies next week. We got we got some goodies. I, I don't know if it'll be as, you know, intriguing as, you know, last week, or rather this week's, but I think we're going to have some good ones. We're definitely going to have another top ten matchup next week. We're definitely going to have that. Still trying to figure out what network that game will be on because of baseball well, we'll figure that out when we figure it out but that time is set in stone so you know I'll be watching and we'll be, we'll be talking about all the big matchups next week and until next week you know which is you know in like 30 minutes or so because Sunday starts in the week but you, you, you get what I mean until you know we talk again about college football I'll be back throughout the week talking NFL, the NBA, more college football, of course. And, yeah, I'm just excited. I'm just excited for, you know, the way college football continues to amaze us. And, I mean, man, what a, what a, what a, what a Saturday. Did you enjoy this Saturday? Because, again, we had six top 25 matchups. We're going to have some changes in the top 25 anyway. But these changes, oh boy, I don't even know what they are going to be tomorrow. I don't even know what the AP is going to look like tomorrow. Man, what a night. Y'all take care, and I'll see you all soon again. Big Boy Sports signing out, and yeah, that's it.